Hi ladies and gentlemen, we're in Unit 2. We're going to be talking about composite figures, which in your textbook is related to Section 10.3. We're going to be using the Area Addition Postulate to find the areas of composite figures. More about that in a minute. And we're going to use composite figures to estimate the area of irregular shapes. New vocab is just composite figure. And let's take a look at our warm-up questions. You've got three warm-up questions to work on. You should feel fairly comfortable with these. And just as a reminder, the area formulas are given to you in each of the questions. So just like you learned how to do, start with the formula, then show substitution, box or circle your final answer, and make sure you have appropriate units. You're going to work on these now and then turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. So as you can see, all we did is start with the formula, show substitution into the formula, and then do the math to come up with a final answer, taking care to make sure we have the correct units. If you have a question about questions one, two, or three in the warm-up, please write it down in your notes and then bring it up in class. The composite figure is a figure that's made up of other shapes. It can be triangles, rectangles, circles, half circles, whatever. In order to find the area of a composite figure, we're going to use the area addition postulate that says the area of a region is equal to the sum of the areas of its non-overlapping parts. So if we were trying to find the area of this composite figure, we would say we're going to find the area of the square, find the area of the triangle, and add them together to get the total area. If we're going to need to add together the areas of the shapes that make up the composite shapes, then we need to know how to find the area of those shapes. So we've got on this page, you've got several different formulas. The formula for the area of a parallelogram, for triangle and trapezoids, rhombuses and kites, and circles. So what I want you to be able to do, you are not going to need to memorize any one of these formulas, but what you do know how, what you do need is to know how to use these formulas. So if there's a formula that says base times height, I want to make sure you know what base means and what height means and that they are perpendicular to one another. When it comes to trapezoids, we have a formula that uses two bases. So those are the two sides that are parallel to one another, and then the height is the perpendicular distance between them. For rhombuses and kites, you can see that this is a little bit different. It says the area of a rhombus or a kite with diagonals D1 and D2 is A is equal to 1 half D1 times D2. And D1 and D2, these refer to diagonals. Diagonals go from a vertex to a vertex. So it's not the side lengths that matter with rhombuses and kites, it's the diagonals. And I know you're familiar with circles. So let's take a look at some specific examples that use these formulas on the next page. Example one says find the areas of the composite figures by adding. So you can see that in part A, we have a composite figure that is made up of half of a circle, otherwise known as a semicircle, and a trapezoid. So we are going to set this up as the total area is equal to the area of the semicircle plus the area of the trapezoid. So now we start with formula. So the area of a semicircle is going to be one half the area of a circle pi r squared. The area of the trapezoid we saw on the previous page, and if you need to look up the formula, please go ahead. 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times the height. Now that we've got the total formula set up for our composite figure, we're going to plug in the actual values. On the semicircle, we've got a diameter of 20 millimeters, so that means that we're going to have a radius of 10 millimeters. And on the trapezoid, one of our bases is 20 millimeters long, the other one is 32 millimeters long, and the height that we see is 14 millimeters high for the trapezoid. So now we basically just do the math, and it says in our instructions that we are going to 
round to the nearest tenth if necessary, that means we're going to multiply the pi right through. And our units are going to be in millimeters squared to one decimal place or the tenths place. So we put this into our calculator, we end up with 521.1 square millimeters. If you have any questions about this, please jot them down in your notes so that we can go, go over them in class together. Let's take a look at Part B. The composite figure in Part B is made up of the combination of a parallelogram and a triangle. That means that the total area of the composite figure is going to be the area of the parallelogram plus the area of the triangle. The area of a parallelogram can be found, if you look on the formula on the previous page, by multiplying base times height. And just a reminder, that's going to be the base length, which we can see is 8 feet, times the perpendicular height, which is 5 feet. That's gonna, we're going to add to that the area of the triangle, which is 1 half base times height, like it always is. Let's go ahead and plug in values. Again, 8 feet times 5 feet for the parallelogram and for the triangle, it's going to be 1 half times 10 feet times 5 feet. Whoops. So that's going to give us 40 square feet plus 25 square feet. We add those together and we end up with 65 square feet for the total area of our composite figure. As before, if you have any questions about this, please jot them down in your notes. After this, what I'd like for you to do is work on the Now You Try and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your work. Remember, the first thing that you're going to do is identify the composite figures. You're going to find the area for each of the composite figures, and then you're going to add the area together to get the total. There is a length that you are missing that I'm going to add in right now, and that is from here to here. That is 50 meters. Okay. With that, you should be able to work on this question. Turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answers. So we had a rectangle and a triangle. We are able to easily figure out the area of both of those composite figures and to get, or both of those figures, and then to get the total for the area of the composite figure, we just add those two together. To determine the areas in example one, we added the areas of the shapes, but sometimes we're going to need to subtract. And we see here in example two, we've got this triangle, but it's got a semicircular cutout from it so that the area that we want to find is just a shaded yellow area. And that means we're going to find the area by finding of the composite figure by finding the area of the triangle and then subtracting out the area of the semicircle. So of course we start by plugging in our formulas. We know that the area of the triangle is 1 half base times height minus the area of a semicircle, which is going to be 1 half pi r squared. And so let's go ahead and plug in. The base of our triangle is 18 feet. The height of the triangle is 26 feet minus 1 half pi times r squared. It gives us a radius of 9 feet, so we know it's going to be 9 over 2 feet, or 4.5, and of course that's going to be squared. So this all goes to our into our calculator, and we end up with a total area of the composite figure of 202.2 .2 square feet. Remember that we were asked to round to the nearest tenth if necessary because we had that pi that we needed to multiply in. We did round to the nearest tenth, which is the same as one decimal place. Okay, let's take a look now at part B. Part B gives us a circle with a trapezoid cut out of it. So that means our total area is going to be the area of a circle minus the area of the trapezoid, the portion of the circle that is not shaded. The area of a circle, of course, is pi r squared. The area of the trapezoid is 1 half base 1 plus base 2 times h. And just a quick reminder that 
the bases are the parts of the trapezoid that are parallel to each other. Okay, so let's go back and plug in. We're gonna have pi, we can see our diameter is 20 centimeters, so it's gonna be a 10 centimeter radius. We'll square that, minus one half. The smaller base is 12 centimeters, the larger base is 20 centimeters, and the height is eight centimeters. So once again, we're gonna put all of this into our calculator and we're gonna end up with a grand total for the composite figure of 186.2 square centimeters. Please write down any questions in your notes and to see if you are comfortable doing this on your own, you're gonna work on the now you try, turn the video off and turn it back on when you're ready to check your answers. Anything that you have a question about, please write it down so that we can talk about it in class. So let's just see what we've got. We've got a circle, we've got a square cut out of the circle, and we have not been given the side lengths. We know it's a square because we see these tick marks in all four sides telling us that the each of the four sides is congruent or the same size. But the measurement that has been given to us is the diagonal. And squares are one type of rhombus. So if you go back to the page where we've got the formulas on, I think it's page 11 of our notes, you have the formula for the area of a rhombus, which a square is a type of rhombus, and it's gonna be the area is one half times diag the length of diagonal one times the length of diagonal two. Because it's a square, it's gonna have the same size diagonals going in uh, from vertex to vertex and from the other two vertices to each other. So set that up. I'll see you back in a minute when you're ready to check your answers. Check your work. And if you have a question, remember to write it down so we can talk about it in class. In example three, we see a company receives an order for 65 pieces of fabric in the shape shown. Each piece is to be dyed red. To dye six square inches of fabric, two ounces of dye is needed. How much dye is needed for the entire order? So the first thing that we need to do is figure out what the area is of the composite figure. And we can see it's a heart shape, but it's made up of two semicircles, or in other words, a whole circle, plus a square. We know both of those formulas. For a circle, it's going to be pi r squared. And for the square, it's going to be side squared. So we'll plug in the values that we know. We've got a circle diameter of 3 inches, so that means it's going to be half of that, or 3 over 2 inches. We're going to square that value, and then the side length squared is going to be 3 inches squared. So we put that into our calculator, and we end up with an area of the composite figure, a total area of 16.1 square inches. Now we know that that's not our final answer because what the question we were asked is how much dye is needed. So we have to take that area that we just found and figure out how much dye is needed for the entire order. So what's the area first of the entire order? And there are 65 pieces of fabric that each have 16.1 square inches. So that means we're gonna multiply 65 to the area of one, 16.1 square inches, and that's gonna give you a total area of 1,046.5 inches. Now, we need to figure out how much dye is needed. And the amount of dye is gonna be equal to the area, we're gonna use a conversion factor basically, of 1,046.5 square inches, and we know we need two ounces for every six square inches, square inch. So we can set this up almost as a conversion factor so that we can figure out the amount of dye needed and we end up with 349 ounces of dye. 
So this one wasn't hard, but we had to read the question carefully to know what we were supposed to be finding. All right, now there's a now you try for you to work on. Read the question carefully. Determine what composite figures you're able to use. And then document your work neatly in an organized fashion so that when you look back on it, you can figure out exactly what's going on. I'm going to have you turn off the video and turn it back on when you're ready to check your work. See you back in a minute. So once you found the composite area, then you needed to determine how much water each one of the, gar the types of gardens would need based on the size and the water usage. And so we found that ultimately using the new garden will save about 23,000 gallons of water per year. This last example, example four, is all about estimating areas of irregular shapes. So what we're gonna be doing is using composite figures to estimate. It's gonna be a rough estimate, and chances are if you choose different composite figures than your neighbor, then you're gonna end up with a, diff a slightly different area. So the first thing that we need to do is decide what figures we see in the irregular shape. And I'm gonna start by saying I kind of see a trapezoid here. So I know that we've got some extra area on that, but we're gonna compensate when we have the triangle next to it that has a little bit less area than the irregular shape. And last of all, I see another triangle right here. So what we're gonna do is determine the area for each one of those shapes, and then we're gonna add them together to get the estimate of the irregular shapes area. So I've written the formulas out, now we're gonna show the substitution into the formula. So we'll start out with the trapezoid one half, one of the bases is two long, the other base is one long, and the height is two. Remember that the bases have to be perpendicular to one another. Okay, we're going to add to that the purple triangle, one half. The base is two long, and the height is two high. And then we're going to add to that the green one, one half, the base is one, and the height is one. When we multiply these through, we're gonna have, for the orange, we're gonna have three. For the purple, we're gonna have two. And for the green, we're gonna have one half. So we're gonna add all of that together, and we're gonna get a total area of 5.5 square feet for the estimate of the area of our irregular shape. All right, there's a now you try, so turn the video off and turn the video back on when you're ready to check your answer. Okay, so our, our composite figure can be made up of a rectangle, a triangle, and a trapezoid, or something else. You may have seen something else. Again, this is an estimate. So our answers may not be exactly alike. They are probably gonna be close though. So that's it for this lesson. And I'm just gonna remind you to go back and rewatch anything that you're not quite sure of. Make sure that your notes are filled out exactly like these notes are filled out. And when we're back in class together, it's time to work on the practice problems that start on the next page. See you back in class.